before we transition to the super chats here i would just love to get a little bit more info on who these beings are and do you actually see a connection between some of the things that may inspire some of the japanese artists for example when they depict like these big big eyed uh, uh anime waifus or whatever and these creatures so go ahead yeah i think they're possessed <laughs> i think that you know, look, these characters in Japanese anime, especially like, you know, the serious, more serious anime, you know, um, Evangelion and stuff like that. Uh, that's not coming from out of a Japanese um, consciousness. That's something else. And I talk about this in Prometheus and Atlas all the way back in my first book. There was a chapter called Kill a Buddha on the Way, which uh, is largely about Japan. And I point out in that chapter how Prometheus is an archetype that transcends the West and how you can see uh, in modern Japan, this Promethean spirit emerging uh, even with greater virulence than in, in the declining West, sadly, um, at least in the decade of the 80s. It, it, it's changed somewhat. In any case, I do think that on, on the level of the collective unconscious, something other than the Japanese mind is producing these visions in Japanese anime. And uh, these beings, which appear in my book, Uberman, as well, um, they, uh, they exist. And um, they are a uh, superhuman form of life. And they also represent a kind of David against the Goliath of olympus they have capacities that are beyond ours and um you know i hate to put it this way but you, you know uh what's that ender's game right um where you have this vision of like a sadly child child soldiers basically right and they think they're playing a game but it requires the unique capacity of these children to win the war that's being fought in that scenario of Ender's Game, right? It's something like that. These beings uh, are like Ray in, uh, in Neon Genesis Evangelion. Remember the, the yeah, kind of the blue haired girl. A girl, Ray. I mean, she's a test tube child, uh, a, a, a clone tank child. And um, there's something true about that vision and about the. Uh, the kind of blow that these beings can deal to our enemy um, that's real and is going to factor into our future. And uh, it's its a matter that I'm deeply concerned with. Yeah, and there are other anime as well, like, for example, Xenogears, which is not an anime so much as a video game. I don't know if you've ever uh, played it back in the day, but that's also one that I think touches on a lot of these uh, various uh, concepts. Even in the style of dress, like, if you look at... Uh, Tenshi Muyo and all of these very strange sci-fi anime movies and uh, series and video games. You even have like these very fancy outfits with the uh, pauldrons on the side and uh, the capes and the, the armor. There's something very otherworldly about the way that a lot of these RPG characters dress that at the same time almost seems to make sense. Like, yeah, like, of course they would dress like that, you know, in the uh, in the days to come. But anyway, uh, let me that, add, yes. add one last thing before sure. we go into the sure. chats uh, on that. And uh, I say this knowing that, you know, uh, of course, this may be a proviso that applies to a lot of the things that I say, but uh, that I'm going to sound like a lunatic saying this. But um, you're, you're in good company, Jason. Don't worry. In, in the future, in the future, there is going to be a witch hunt for these little people. And there, there are gonna be voices like banging on pulpits and podiums to murder these people. They're gonna be called demonic and branded as demonic and they're gonna be witch hunts to exterminate them. And I believe it's very important that we protect them. We meaning we Prometheans. Well, one final question then before the Super Chats. When we're talking about these beings, before I was mentioning the spectral nature of them as opposed to being fully solidified, and again, I'm using these terms very loosely because it would be hard for me to even define what exactly that means, but in your 
in your thoughts, what exactly would something like that mean? How fur further away from what we consider a corporeal reality would these beings necessarily be? As far as would we be able to grab them by the wrist, shake their hand? Like, what exactly are we talking about here? Oh, yeah, we, I mean, yeah. you would know, be able to, yeah, I mean, you can certainly grab them, absolutely. Um, but they can also walk through walls. And matter isn't what we think it is. I mean, we live in a quantum computational cosmos. And, you know, the relationship between consciousness and the collapse of the probability wave of the wave function um, is what defines phenomena that we take to be quote unquote reality. And, you know, a more, let's say, advanced form of consciousness um, like that, which would be yielded by artificial intelligence in combination with cybernetics and so forth, would be able to manipulate the world uh, let, let's let's say would be able to uh would be able to more dynamically express the spectrality of the world okay so we are spectral we're spect the world is spectral sure yeah. but our our latent materialism concretizes things and creates limitations that are an exteriorization of our own mental constructs and filters and that would not be the case with a higher form of consciousness that also had cybernetic um, capacities including potentially the so-called gods these uh nordics uh, coming in where i would imagine they'd also have a few tricks up their sleeve when it comes to not necessarily being as solidified as we would imagine oh yeah oh yeah i mean there's this one account of one showing up in Hitler's bedroom at night, and he used to scream. The, his doctor would come in, and he was sh curled up in the corner, shrieking. And he kept pointing in the corner of the room, saying, Easy, he came again, he came again. And uh, they had to get medical treatment for this on a fairly regular basis. He claimed this tall Nordic would just show up in the room in the middle of the night. And the Nordic didn't say anything to him. He would just stand there and laugh at Hitler. Well, well, he does have a funny mustache, so I could see the, uh, I, I kind of understand why somebody like Charlie Chaplin would also choose that kind of mustache. And the whole thing is kind of, the whole thing is kind of ironic, too, how we have, uh, all these various characters playing their roles. And they do look kind of clownish when you think about it. Like, we just have, like, this mustached guy that all these people on 4chan are obsessed with. And, like, the entire world, uh, you know, today looks on, uh, and is, you know, memorized by them, but not so much these Nordics. Like, I wish there were more movies about these Nordics, but there's not. The closest thing is Dragon Ball Z. But anyway... It's on yeah. purpose. It's yeah. on purpose. It is being deliberately <laughs> censored. Uh, indeed. Uh, other than on Break the Rules, here we do not censor the, uh, the Nordics. Oh, and by the way, before the Super Chats, I love that painting in the background there. And I know it's got the Prometheanism symbol on it. And it also reminds me a bit of Evangelion, like the Fifth Impact. I don't know whether it's like that uh, cyclone that's going on back there. But it does remind me of one of those backgrounds from, uh, from the new movie. Definitely from the remakes. So anyway...